Imagine you want to start a business. Let's say it's an original idea, like a dietary supplement that claims to give customers some positive health effects. So what you do is you market your product online, sell it, and voila, you are now running a business where you are your own boss. Except that's not true because of the business hierarchy of the world. Let me explain. Your dietary supplement would likely go for sale on Amazon.com, the largest online retailer in the world. This is because you want your product to be on a website that would get you tons of exposure and is also a trusted website by most consumers, therefore hopefully resulting in more sales than if you were to sell it on your own website. But to sell a product on Amazon, you need to get approved as a seller, and Amazon takes several fees from you as a seller so that they can make money as well. This relationship usually works well for both Amazon, yourself, and the consumer. Amazon makes a little bit of money, you make some more money, and the consumer gets the product they want within two days. However, this also means that Amazon now controls what happens to your business. I mean, if they wanted to, they could straight up just ban your seller account or triple their seller fees overnight, and all of a sudden your business venture could be over like that. Even though these things rarely happen at Amazon, what does happen often is they actually just copy your product, put their own label over it, and name it Amazon's Choice, and all of a sudden, your product is now too expensive and of a lesser quality than Amazon's version of your product. So, Amazon has the power to make or break your online dietary supplement business. But even Amazon, the trillion dollar company, has a boss. Think about it, when you purchase a product on Amazon, you are either buying it through their website or their phone app. And for this example, let's use their website. Most traffic on Amazon.com is reliant on two things, browsers and search engines. So what if one day the dominant company in both of these spaces, Google, decided that Amazon would no longer show up in their search engine? Or what if they decided to give Amazon.com the this website isn't safe screen? In a sense, browser and search companies can control nearly every website on the internet. But yes, even browsers and search engines are also dependent on something else operating systems. Operating systems can flat out dictate what is and isn't available on their platforms because of how they are programmed. That's why for decades, Mac OS had different programs, video games, and applications than on Windows or even Linux. And what can also happen is when an operating system updates, sometimes a program that you have used forever will become incompatible with the newest update of an OS. But the most common form of an operating system dictating on what is allowed on their platform occurs on mobile operating systems. On mobile operating systems, certain applications will flat out be banned, and you will be unable to download and install them, even if their software is compatible with the operating system itself. So technically, operating systems control all the software that is on your computer, including web browsers. And that makes you think, what are operating systems installed on? Devices. Things like smartphones, laptops, desktops, and tablets are arguably the top point of control in our modern economy. Let's take a look at the top four most valuable companies in the world. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, and Google. What do they all have in common? Well, they all have tried their very, very best to own the physical devices market, specifically the smartphone. That's because they know that owning the most popular device in the world that connects you to the internet is the ultimate source of control. Or, it was. You see, software companies like Facebook and Google didn't like how the physical device companies had complete control over them. So what did they start doing? They began trying to own access to the internet itself. That's right, around 2015, Facebook and Google began launching satellites and high altitude weather balloons that would allow millions of people to connect to the internet for free. Here's the catch. Now, they are able to gather more data and dictate what websites you can browse using their internet. Think about this, let's say you are using an iPhone to connect to Facebook's free internet program. And let's say you wanted to go onto apple.com, the website of the company whose phone you are currently using. Well, if you use Facebook's free internet, you actually couldn't access that website. 
because Facebook gets to choose what websites are and are not available through their internet. And the current list of websites you can access right now is only about 25 items long. And to no one's surprise, Facebook is the default website, while competitor tech companies' websites like Google, YouTube, Twitter, Apple, Netflix, and Amazon are nowhere to be seen on this list. So the next frontier of control might actually be giving away free internet to the entire world. And who knows? If Facebook, Google, or another tech company succeeds in this free internet venture, we might see the biggest gatekeeper of business the world has ever seen. And that is how just a few companies control every other online business on this planet. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to this channel as I am making weekly business documentaries like this. And if you're interested in my next business venture, please check out my gaming channel in the link below, where I'm currently programming an RPG game which will be available on PlayStation, Xbox, PC, Mac, Windows, and pretty much anything else that I could put it on. The link is in the description below.